Good morning, BoatingBanter.com fans. Captain Larry here. Today we're going to go into Chapter 6, and we're going to cover three of the basic sewing seams that you will use for your boat redos and cushions. Uh, they're pretty simple. A uh, little bit of practice, and you'll be fine. Uh, let's first, uh, we've shown <coughs> already how this is threaded with the bobbin. Uh, again, like I told you, what I like to do is to begin checking it out. Make sure the seams are in good shape. So you put your, put some scrap in there, drop your foot, hold your trailers. And just run, try your reverse, make sure that's working well. Then forward. arm all the way up, as we mentioned before, take it out, cut the threads, and then just take a good look at it. Do you have nice straight seams? Are the knots been pulled into the vinyl? Looks very good. And I'm using uh, dark blue on this white so you guys can kind of get a, a view of what it looks like. So anyway, it looks like it's sewing pretty good. <coughs> so let's take a shot at it. First one I'm going to show you is a <coughs> simple uh, single seam. This is what you'll be using you know 80 90 percent of the time if you'll notice your cushions uh, on your boats will have uh, either one just one kind of seam all the way around or they'll have maybe two. Uh, the most common one you'll see especially in the non-viewing areas the back of cushions, the side of cushions that really aren't in clear view. Uh, the back rests, again, where you really don't see it really well. They'll just simply use a, a simple seam on it. A uh, simple seam is obviously the easiest one to do uh, if you're using a good thread. And let's like say you use about a six millimeter distance between strokes on your machine. Uh, you'll find it, it comes out quite well. Uh, I'm gonna try to do kill two birds with one stone here. Uh, we made this piping the other day, and I want to show you how uh, a simple seam uh, is obviously just simply <laughs> sewing down the sewing down the seam. And I say I usually use a quarter inch to a half inch, depending on the fabric I'm using and, and how easy and hard it is to work with. But this piping we made the other day, I'll show you how you put the piping in. Now, <clears throat> the way you need to do it is in the terminology of cushions. Uh, this would be called the boxing. What simply that means, and this would be the plate. So simply you have, this is the seat where you sit on. Uh, you'll have a plate on the top and you'll also have a plate on the bottom. Now usually the bottom plate is not vinyl. As I mentioned the other day, it's usually a backing kind of material, but it's still the plate. So you have the top plate and then you'll usually have a strip of some kind like this, which they call the boxing. That simply means that it uh, squares off and boxes off the cushion, and of course your foam is in here. And so that's where your, your cushion will look. So, they, so when, if you hear instructions and people say, well, put this plate here and put the box in here, that's what they're meaning. Now when you sew, you sew with the, they call these good faces and bad faces. Good faces is the thing you say you're going to be sitting on and seeing, and the bad face is just simply the underside. So when you sew, you sew the two good faces facing each other. Because when you're done, this thing will be folded over, and then that will be your done cushion. So let me show you that. Now that is, would be, if you just want to do a simple single stitch, that's all you would do. Now as I mentioned before, what I do is I line them up. And as I mentioned, you can't be careful enough of having good, solid, straight edges. What I do is I staple these together with just regular staples and this staple gun I really like to use, so easy to use, and put it down and <coughs> where I want it to go on the, on the uh, seam allowance you're going to use here. So I usually use about a quarter. Just got to remember, uh, the more seam allowance you use, obviously the more uh, fabric you're going to use. But the other thing is when you fold over, that seam allowance is now underneath, and that creates a bump. <coughs> now, 
if you obviously if you're using a quarter inch it's a very small bump if you're using an inch it's a significant bump so uh, you want to use pretty much the, the smallest amount you see professionals when you're pulling apart you redo projects from the uh, from when the factory would put them together they usually use about a quarter inch I found very very small for obviously several reasons it gives a nice finished product uh, with lacking of bumps and lumps on your cushion and also saves them over thousands and thousands of cushions I would imagine saves them some some serious money so anyway that's what I simply do put it down there line up everything I want I got my lines perfectly straight I would tack staples all the way down this in about you know four or five inch uh, intervals <coughs> depending on how 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 unwieldy is <coughs> one, let me just add one other thing a lot of times unfortunately you're not lucky enough to have these nice straight runs you'll have <coughs> like on a sun deck you'll have curved stripes so I, f I found you need a lot more stapling on that and it helps if you bend uh, the products together the two, the two pieces the boxing and uh, or you may be putting two parts of a plate together or whatever. <coughs> so you got one's a, one, you got two arcs, you're trying to get arcs together. It'll end up like that a lot of times. So you got to pull it up, get it up there and bend it, and then tack it. Then you may have to tack again, you may have to tack again to keep that, keep that curve square. And then simply as you sew, as I do, I just take my little staple puller here, which is quite simple. Just yank it out <coughs> as I'm getting to that, so I don't run over, run over with the needle. So anyway, that's we'll get into that. Uh, a matter of fact, uh, just a side note: I am negotiating on a boat right now that needs basically a total redo of the vinyl upholstery, and uh, I'm getting very close. And hopefully, I'm going to pick it up this weekend if that all happens, and we'll begin this total redo project. Uh, a lot sooner than I was planning. So let's hope that all works out. <coughs> and I'll show everybody the A to Z of that. Okay, now if you're going to add piping, let's say this is a cushion has piping. Uh, what you do with the piping is you put the piping to the inside on the good side. That makes any sense to you because this is the side we'll be showing. So you put the edge up to the edge of this you want. We'll do a little tacking. Now, what I do is I I I uh, sew this first. They say the good people that know what they're doing can do this, the boxing and the plate and the piping all at once. I am not that good, so I like yeah. to do them one at a time so I make sure everything's lined up the way I like it. And let's just take it right down. Take your time. Try to keep your piping on the line here. Keep the piping under the tunnel, as we had mentioned before. This is the down. in the front which I should have to have done. It's not as important in here because we're going to we're going to be sewing another level on top of that so it pretty much holds everything together. Okay so we got we got one done here. I think it out. Piping obviously too long. Okay, so now what we do is we have the piping on our plate. Let's say this would be the plate you'd be sitting on. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to sew another the boxing right on top. Let's pull out that staple. We won't need that anymore. Again, the two good faces are going to be facing each other, and the boxing is sandwiched in the middle. Again, on this one here, I'm going to need a couple more staples to keep this project all lined up right. Curling threads to the northeast. Line up these edges really nicely. And I like to massage. I always massage the, the boxing 
or the plate, whichever one's on top. Make sure that's nice and snug in there. And you make gotta make sure that your piping is in that tunnel. But otherwise you will not be happy with the results. Again that massage, massage. I got the staple flying up outside so I won't hit it. Let's do one little reverse here. Massage, massage, make sure my lines are good. Lines good. Lines good. Tunnel good. Push it down, push it down. Push it down, snug it in. Make sure that's right in the tunnel there so we open everything up. Go back and get your staple because you don't want to leave that little rust and make a big mess. Pull that out. And this is what we've done here. There you go. Nice. That would be the cushion. Actually, it would be like that. It would be plate here, boxing here, and a nice decorative navy pipe in the middle. And then, of course, you go all the way around, all four sides. And the very end of the piping, what you simply do is you release it and overlap it a little bit. So you get it. So the thing, so you'll see just a, a little seam like that. You can get piping, of course, but decorations and designs on it, and those are a little easier to hide that seam. But uh, we'll show you that in our project. Uh, we'll have some long runs of uh, piping that we'll need to splice together. Yeah, it looks really good, doesn't it? Okay, that is just a simple single seam. <coughs> Let's try a double. <coughs> this is the kind of seam that you use for most of your exposed thread, I mean, uh, seams on your cushions. And, and that way there, I mean, like I say, the singles will usually go on the sides and the back. Some just use singles all the way around, and it's fine. I guess it all depends on what you like to look at. Uh, check our edges here. It's not great. Over here. That's yeah, a little better. Okay, we're going to do uh, a double here. Again, the two. And again, I like to make this one a little seam allowance, a little smaller, quarter inch-ish, maybe a little bit bigger than that. <coughs> I like to follow the feet going down the line. You can also put tape there. Uh, so they can sell magnets. They sell magnet guides you can use. I find I don't like them because they get in the way more than they help you. So I usually use the feet to guide my stroke, uh, how far away the edge is from the foot. I say no, also you can help. I use a little, that blue painter's tape put that down so it kind of keeps me going sometimes and it's flat of course so it's not going to be in the way. Okay we've got the foot down and start a couple of strokes. Do a reverse. And let's see if we can't follow that foot right down. Make a nice foot down. that, as I mentioned before, this would be your simple single stitch. You use on that mostly on your, you know, your backrests and inside cushions and all that kind of stuff. Back at the back and the bottom. You don't, you obviously won't see these corners. That's what you mainly use. However, let's say this is going to be, this is the front of the cushion. 
And you want it a little more decorative than that. That single stitch is fine, but it's just not very pretty, is it? <coughs> so what I do is I fold over that stitch, the seam allowance that we made. This is a little more tricky. you got to really fight that sometimes. But put it down. Another good thing you can do is you can get these threads out of here. Kind of almost iron these things because what you want is the seam allowance to be flat as possible. <coughs> so we want to get it on the side of a table. Anything else? Kind of get that thing laying down. Okay. So we've got it leaning, uh, as you can see, it's facing that way. So what we'll do is we'll take that, get it under the machine, and I like to follow the foot right on the seam, the right side of the foot, right down the seam line. Okay, hold that thread, do it just a couple of shots, just a little reverse. Now we'll go forward. Now let's see if we can follow that seam. We splay it out. That's the word. I guess you pull it out. You keep feeling for that seam. Make sure it's laying nice and flat. And again, you got to go slow. you got to pull, pull apart, and feel for that. There you go. And walk this foot right down the, right down the seam. Right Check it. Make sure you got the bent over now. Pull it apart, push it down. Put your fingers on it. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. <coughs> and let's do a little bit of this. And we're done. Okay, now if you see that on your side of your boat. <coughs> Now you've got a decorative seam. You've got one seam, of course, kind of holding the thing together. The good thing about this is now you've sewn into the other side of that also. So now you really have a double seam holding everything together. <coughs> so if you're looking at a cushion from the inside and it's got this nice seam on it, now you see <coughs> you'd probably use white so you wouldn't be able to see it as well. <coughs> but if you want a decorative more, I guess you could put a navy blue thread in there like I did. So anyway, this is a hidden seam you don't see, which is a simple one. And then you overlay that with the, the double seam. And it gives a little more decorative, gives a little puff here to the vinyl, makes it look a little nicer. Autos, you see a lot of those automobiles. So anyway, that's a double seam. Came out pretty good. Okay, finally, <coughs> one you, you see, rarely see, is the French seam. Now French seam is obviously the most difficult one to do, but it's uh, it's not that bad. So again, let's take a, this is a good side, this is a good side. Let's just put these two goods together, let's check our, yeah, the line's pretty good. Okay, so we've got two good sides down. And we'll just start off like we had before all the rest. We're going to make a simple seam. This time our seam allowance, we need to have a little bit more. So let's go like a half an inch. So I'm not, I want this foot inside the edge of this by about a, well, an eighth of an inch quarter, maybe, yeah, maybe an eighth of an inch. Okay, hold my trails, trailing threads. Do a little reverse. Go forward. Again, try to keep my eighth. Showing that. Nice and straight. Oh, not too straight there. Fall apart, fall apart. Oh, just, just disengaged. <coughs> okay, all we did is make a simple stitch there, but we, we left more of a seam allowance. Uh, two. So, as I mentioned before, this would be there's just a simple, simple seam on a cushion. This is a box, and this is a plate. So now we will go, and we're going to splay these open. That's this. So 
and I found any way you possibly can do it is a way to do it. I'll take a scissor. handle and just kind of massage that thing down. Because what we're going to do is we need to pull the seam and we need to splay these two sides of the seam allowance. And then what we're going to do is use the same kind of fabric and we're going to put a plate, we're going to put a patch there. Okay, so you can see the importance of pulling that apart. And now we're going to sew down both these sides. <coughs> so this is the hardest one because you've got to keep everything lined up. And that's where the trick comes in. So again, you feel, make sure you, you look underneath. You're in the line, which we're not right now. Okay. Yep, you got the both sides splayed. You want to put that in the middle. Here's my trailing there. There it is. Okay, now again, I like to walk this thing around. Okay, let's see if we can get this down. Now again, we're pulling the seam apart. We're trying to get that needle into the curled over, splayed over seam and into the strap we put in the back. Start here a little bit here. Keep going. Let's do a little reverse on that. Okay, and we try to keep this right down the seam line. Always checking the bottom. Make sure your splay is splayed. You spread out. Look under there again. Make sure you spread out. And in the center of the strap. You push it down. You pull apart. Push it down. Pull apart. Check, 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 check. Don't forget to check. We're in the middle. We're down. We're pulling apart. We're following the seam line. Check again. Splay. Pull. Keep your line right. Keep your foot right on that line. We got the splay. Yes, we got the splay out. We got the strap. This one's a little easier, obviously, but everything uh, should be lined up for you now. Like the trailing threads up. Again, we'll put it in. Line up that foot right with the seam line. Drop it. Hold your threads. Pull it a little bit. Okay, now, now we should just have to pull this, pull it apart. The splay should be there, but just make sure we're following that line as well as we can. Taking our time. a nice French seam. That really fancies up. You see most this most of the time in uh, seats, the captain seats and that on the edges of those where it really is probably the most exposed seam you're going to see. So it looks nice. You got I use of course so you can see it I use a different color thread but normally that would just stay in white. When you look underneath, again all we've done is we put a patch or a slat there, a patch of the similar material, if not the same. We see our splay, we splayed out, and we have, then we have, of course, the actual sitting side, or the face front side. So you've got a good three level there, and this is a very, very, very hefty seam, as you can see, because we've got the original sole that we did for the seam, 
And now we've sewn on both sides with a strap in the middle for more reinforcement. So this seam seems like very good. I mean, this, this one should last a long time. Okay, so there you have it. This is your again, your French. Here's your double seam. <clears throat> and here's your simple seam, single seam with the, uh, with the piping in it. Okay, I hope you learned something. Uh, obviously, it's not the greatest job in the world, but they're all right for my skill level. Uh, you probably won't come across any other kinds of uh, seams in a boat repair, uh, redo. Um, so, anyway, that should cover you. And if it doesn't, uh, we'll come across those and, and do our project and we'll see how that all turns out. Okay, thanks again. This was Chapter 6 from BoatingBanner.com. Boating Upholstery, uh, the three basic seams that you'll be sewing uh, for your projects. Uh, you have a great day and thanks for coming.